Thank you very much, Prime Minister Marin, dear Sana, Prime Minister Kallas, dear Kaya, Deputy Prime Minister Eber Bush, distinguished guests and dear friends, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Indeed, we are a relatively short drive from Helsinki, and we are in the heart of nature. And I could not think of a better place than this one to discuss the importance of forests. We are learning more every day about the immense role these rich and complex ecologic systems play for the health of people, but of course also for the health of our planet. Europe's 400 billion trees absorb almost 9% of our continent's greenhouse gas emissions. For example, by retaining water, they help to prevent floods and droughts. And they are even stabilizing rainfall patterns by shaping the clouds we see in the sky. So far, it's our livelihoods, they are energy, building materials, and of course, they are economic growth and many, many important jobs. New innovative products are being developed. Wood-based products have an enormous potential to replace fossil-based products. And I'm very much looking forward to learn more about all this today at this conference. So let's have a look at the forests. For thousands of years, forests have been for us an enchanted place of mystery and magic, as well as modern science. In our oldest um, fairy tales and folk tales, forests are the home, and you know it all, of spirits, of wise animals, of wizards, of healers. Today, more than 25% of our medicines still originate in rainforest, plant, uh, rain, rainforest plants. Forests are, in the widest sense of the word, part of who we are. And they must be our shared responsibility. Because we all know that today, our forests globally are in danger. Near my hometown in Hanover, that's the northern part of Germany, there is a forest that I have known since decades. And whenever I come home, I take a walk in this forest. And in the recent years, I've seen this forest withering. Pests are thriving. In our warming climate, you know all the signs of this development. Also here in the north, forests are changing with the climate. This summer, wildfires in the European Union released an amount of carbon that is equivalent to the annual emission of around 5 million cars, annual emission. We know that scientists are debating whether forests in Europe are carbon sinks or rather net carbon emitters. Whatever the outcome of this debate is, there's certainly one point we can all agree on. Healthy forests are our strongest allies to fight for a healthy planet. And we need to do more to save and better manage our forests. And this is what brings us here today to this conference. Let me begin with the global picture. In the last three decades, an area that is larger than the whole European Union has been lost to deforestation. And we all have a responsibility in this. Consumption in the European Union, for example, is said to be responsible for about 10% of these losses. But now with the European Green Deal, we have to decide not only to address the problem, but to be part of the solution. A regulation on deforestation-free products, for example, is set to be adopted next month, just in time before the COP15 in Montreal. Our message is very clear. Europe is cleaning up its supply chains for products that trigger deforestation. And this marks a turning point in the global fight against deforestation because the regulation addresses not only the illegal deforestation,
but all forms of deforestation that cuts down trees without replanting them. Soon, only products that are not based on deforestation will be allowed to our single market. But we also know that the solution cannot only be a simple ban, because forests are an important economic and also cultural factor. So we need to give an alternative to deforestation to those local communities who depend so much on forests for their livelihoods. Like, for example, creating new jobs, sharing know-how in conservation of forests, supporting new supply chains for sustainably sourced timber. Last year in Glasgow, I signed for the European Union a 1 billion euro global forest pledge. That was the pledge. And this year, at COP27 in Sharm el-Sheikh, I could sign five forest port partnerships with five different countries to put this pledge in action. And it's exactly what we are working on to make sure that there's an alternative to deforestation for these communities. Just to give you an example, for example, wood processing in Guyana or forest products like honey in Uganda or sustainable tourism in the Republic of Congo. So not only ban the deforestation or fight the deforestation, but really create viable alternatives. The local communities can thus make a living by protecting and by respecting their forests. This is how we address the global challenge of deforestation through closer cooperation and giving people a sustainable alternative that is good for them and good for the planet. Now here in Europe we have decades of experience in sustainable forestry. For example, you here in Finland, forest resource data has been regularly collected since the 1920s already. So with this knowledge together, we can build on your experience and take it to the next level. And this is my second point. Let us join forces to nurture our forest biodiversity and bioeconomy. Let us shift the incentives from short-lived uses of natural resources to long-lived and circular ones. And this is the aim of the European Land Use Revision. The final missing link is a proposal for certification of carbon removal. It is a quality guarantee to people and organizations who want to fund carbon removal activities. So not only can we then better monitor that our forests remain carbon sinks, but foresters and forest owners will be recognized and rewarded for the time and the care they invest to keep our forests healthy. And as you said, Sana, I think it was 60% of the forest here in Finland is owned by private people. So let's reward them for the, the care they are giving and the nurturing they are providing to their forests. These measures help ensure that timber is sustainably harvested, not just in your countries here, but also across the European Union. So this covers the supply side of the equation. On the demand side, we need to do more to promote the use of long-lived biomaterials, like quality wood for construction. And this is indeed where the new European Bauhaus comes into play. We want to improve people's lives by designing and building sustainably. And to see what I mean, I mean, you just have to look around into this building, the Finnish Nature Center, a cross-laminated timber building we're in here. When it was built in 2013, it was the first of its kind in Northern Europe. Today, if you look at the overall material input in the European construction, Timber is 3%, so I would say it's still a niche, but with a big room for improvement, and the demand is growing fast. And the new European Bauhaus wants to drive this transformation. 
You might know that the original Bauhaus movement that was founded in 1919 explored specifically new construction methods and new materials. At that time, it was, of course, concrete and steel. But at that time already, there was a great Finnish architect known around the world. His name is Alvar Alto, very famous. He was a pioneer at that time already because he loved to work with wood. He used wood and created icons of wooden furniture. Actually, if you look at them today, they are still extremely modern in their design, so outstanding. Now, today we are lucky because we have a whole generation of young architects, designers, engineers that want to redefine our way of building and living. And they are rediscovering natural materials such as timber. And they have understood how smart nature is to find solutions. And they try to understand these nature-based solutions and to transform them into our world of construction, for example. We all know that today building with timber could save up to 40% of carbon emissions in comparison to concrete. That's a huge figure. So by keeping the carbon inside the wood, one day timber could turn our homes and even entire cities into carbon sinks. To some of you, this might sound like a dream, but in Finland, as well as in Estonia and Sweden, you are showing Europe already how this works, how this is possible and doable. You have centuries of experience in building out of wood. And we need your experience, now more than ever, to encourage sustainable forestry and lead the next revolution in architecture. So the new European Bauhaus aims to be a movement that brings like-minded people together to generate new collaborations and new ideas and bring to a wider public the many, many wonderful things that are being done by pioneers like you. And this brings me to my third and final point. Let's empower people to lead and drive this change. The growing importance that forest and construction will play in the green transition requires new skills, or perhaps it's old skills rediscovered. So we need more rangers, engineers, chemists, chem chemists timber, timber craftsmen, data specialists, you name it. And we know that these skills are in too short supply today. There's a recent report by the IFO Institute that found that nearly 35% of EU construction firms report a shortage of skilled workers, 35%. So skilling has to grow with the transformation we are aiming at. There will not be a green transformation if we don't have the skills and if they are not people who drive the transformation. And that is why we have proposed to make the year 2023 the European Year of Skills. The idea is to better match the different skilling strategy with the economy's needs for specific skills in the labor market. It is about bringing industry, forest owners, trade unions, universities, training providers together. An approach that we are pioneering with our pact of four skills. We have created 12 large scale partnerships offering skilling opportunities to 6 million European citizens of working age. But we need much, much more than this. And this is why I am happy to announce today that we are launching a new European Bauhaus Academy. The Academy will have three major priorities. First of all, it is about fostering green and digital skills in construction. We want to reskill and upskill at least three million construction workers in the next five years because we need them now to drive the transformation. The second point is we need more research and uh, development and innovation in this crucial, crucial sector. And for that, we need increased funding. Therefore, Horizon Europe 
you all know our research program, highly worldwide renowned, will soon make a call for nature-based material demonstrators worth 10 million euros. We want to know what's out there, as innovative ideas, to then develop them and bring them to the market. I'm very grateful to John Schellenhuber for his initiative and advice in this issue. And we also want to learn from the new European Bauhaus how regulation can incentivize the use of quality nature-based solutions and biomaterials. And finally, the new academy will have a very strong digital focus. We want to provide online courses for sustainable forestry design and wood construction, and thus basically create a truly European wood academy or forest academy. And we will do that together with you, the Nordic Bauhaus. Many, many thanks for joining this. The Commission will make available an additional 1 million euros. I want to thank all three of you for your enormous commitment. It is your network of universities, of architects, of urban play, uh, planners, of construction companies. You are the leaders in the field of sustainability. And we need your knowledge and we need your network to bring the best together. I think we can multiply your experience and your innovations all across the European Union and across the world because we are perhaps one small part of a global ecosystem, but we can be a big part of the solution if we do it right. So ladies and gentlemen, you all know the old saying when people sometimes miss the obvious, we say you lose sight of the forest for the trees. Well, here today we do the exact opposite. We're zooming out and it's about the big picture that we want to discuss. It's about embracing the importance of forests for our lives and our livelihoods. It's about forests as our home, forests as our economic foundation, and of course, forests as our best allies to fight climate change. Many thanks. Thank you very much, President von der Leyen. Very inspiring words. And a new European Bauhaus Academy. How about that? That sounds very exciting as well. Now it's about to time to hear from our neighbours. Because as you all know and have heard, here in the north, the climate is unfortunately warming faster than in the rest of the planet. So we are heading towards a greater degree warming already by now than the rest of the, the places. And that's, of course, a concern to our forests. And therefore, we are collaborating and trying to find ways with our neighboring countries of what to do with this. And therefore, it's more than appropriate now to hear their views. It's a great pleasure first to invite to the stage a Prime Minister of Estonia, Kaja Kallas, please. <laughs> 